Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how we can make a printable uh, notching pattern for your pipes. That way you can send it out to uh, your guys out there in the shop. That way they do their copes a little easier and quicker. Um, right here, what I'm going to do, I've designed a part that I'm going to turn into a frame. Now I did this instead of going into frame design and doing my sketches for you know the pathway of my frame parts. I find this to be a little easier. We can use you can use your synchronous tools to go ahead and change this shape and design within the assembly after you're done. But basically drew a quick shape over here in a part file, saved it out, and brought it into the assembly environment. Once inside the assembly environment, I went ahead and go out, went into my frame design. And inside my frame design, of course, there's uh, I've got some tools here that I could use. Went in the frame, chose how, what kind of coping and uh, end treatments I wanted to apply to it, selected a side, applied a two-inch pipe to it all the way around, and made my quick little frame. Now here you can see the actual, you know, the, the, the original part that I based this off of, and if I don't want to see that anymore, I can just simply turn it off, and there's my exposed frame. Now you can see here I've got three different frames that I've got set up. I've got uh, two sides and then some individual cross pipes here that are connecting and some of these have some pretty complex little cuts in them. The side frame over here is just basic angled cuts. Now you can go ahead and save this out and bring it into an assembly and with the new tools in SD7 draft you can actually do individual drawings on each pipe within the draft environment. And if you want to go ahead and make uh, try to get a pattern on these pipes, what you're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to convert these over into sheet metal. Now, we do have the ability within Solid Edge, and it's pretty much any Solid Edge, really, uh, five, six, I think even seven. You can right click and you can actually save the entire group out as an assembly. So if you save this out, you'll actually have an independent assembly from this frame that's within this this file here. You can actually save each assembly, each piece part, and it'll you can go ahead and create your draft files and all that. Or you can actually do individual piece parts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one of these, right click, and I'm going to go ahead and save this out as a single pipe. And I've already got one done, so I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, single pipe on A. Okay. I save it out that way. You've also noticed there, I've also had the ability of saving as a translated. Saving it as a translated is a uh, parasolid part. Now, the advantage or the, the option you have by doing is saving this out as a parasolid is that you can actually open this back up inside Solid Edge. Let me close out my frame. You can actually open up this parasolid back up in the Solid Edge and bring it into whatever environment you want. So in this case, you know, if you wanted to bring it inside sheet metal, you could bring in a side sheet metal and there's your pipe. The advantages of doing it this way is that you can, after you do the same steps that I'll show you in the part environment, but you can come in here and do a save as a flat pattern. This will generate a DXF file that's one to one. And so if you want to go ahead and do it that way, then you can print it off using Solid Edge again. You would open up DXF and inside uh, Solid Edge and you'd be guaranteed a one to one you know, a scale a flat pattern. You can achieve the same thing by going into the draft, but it's kind of a one-step process. Now, you could do it that way, do it the parasol, you follow the same steps that I'm about to show you inside the regular part file. The only thing is you have that extra option. So um, I've saved that off as a single part, and I believe it's that one right there. Let me go ahead and open this up. So there's my, my pipe's going to be sitting here out floating around the space. And that's okay. I can line it up here in a minute. Uh, right now you can see it's inside the ordered environment. Uh, I've got the little you know, optimization icon right next to that. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly optimize it. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring this over to synchronous. I'm going to move that right over. The reason I do that is it makes it a little easier to, to move around and manipulate. Because sometimes, you know, if you're designing frames and stuff, the frame, the piping, or the frame component may not actually, you know, open up and save as a, you know, 
square it up on your coordinate system so it may be off at an angle and when you do your uh, split on the pipe to convert it over to sheet metal to unfold it you kind of want that split to go right down the middle of the tube so you can use your steering wheel after you go into uh, synchronous and you can you know use the steering wheel to line it up if you wanted to the base coordinate system you can um, there's a quick little trick that I like to use still within synchronous but I can create a quick cylinder over here on this plane and by creating a cylinder now I have an axis that I can line up and actually use my face relay tools so I can make a concentric relationship between this pipe over here and this cylinder and that'll go ahead and line the two up perfectly so no need to you know having to skip across and do the you know mess with the steering wheel and now right now I have the option of detaching this cylinder and not use it anymore detaching is synchronous version of suppressing or I can simply just delete it out I'm left with my pipe here so the next step I would do is now in order to convert it to sheet metal of course I need my to split in the pipe now again you can get as close as you want and make the gap as small as you need to right here I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it's about a quarter of an inch or so maybe even more I can go ahead and throw a dimension there if I needed to and then readjust this but for right now yeah it's about a quarter of an inch so if you want to make it smaller you know there you can make it smaller and since I didn't define the length of this line here I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball that out over here there's my split and going on down my pipe now to finish it out select that region I'm going to go ahead and remove anything coming off this side here and straight through so let me go back over here there you can see my pipe split the other thing you'll notice is that the uh, oh the way that solid edge and the uh, frame design uh, performs the cut through the pipe and the coping it's actually a uh, a union subtract so it grabs the two bodies then it subtracts anything inside the intersection so by definition this isn't a true you know if you did this if you were to draw this pipe up inside sheet metal and do a a normal two cut you know perform an exact cut like you would there uh, the thickness would be uniform it would come off of one plane there so that's why it's kind of it's kind of got this weird cut over here I'm not really concerned about this because the only thing I'm concerned about is the outline and how I'm going to translate this over to the guys in the shop so that's the only thing they're going to be concerned with they're not going to be concerned about this extra extra width over here so now that I've got it split uh, I'm gonna come over ahead and right now my my part environment I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my sheet metal get my menu ribbon and I'm gonna go ahead and transition over to order two so go back to ordered I'm going to choose the convert to sheet metal or a thin part to sheet metal tell to go to the outside and voila I have now transformed this into a sheet metal part and go to flatten it out give me an edge and there we go I now have my quick flat pattern of my part now if I wrote this over to the back you'll be able to see the the, the boolean subtract but since I'm not concerned with that I can go with this I go ahead and save it right quick and get this over into a draft now if you were you know if you're gonna do this in real life you probably just go ahead and cut away you know substantially cut away half the half the pipe because you're gonna print this out and only show this part that would be an option to uh, go over here to the draft environment you would also probably turn off your your border over here too you probably won't need that but I'm gonna go ahead and call in my flat pattern here I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to go to my top view and I'm going to change my scale to one to one. And I'm just going to place up. Oh, let's get rid of those hidden lines back there. There we go. And I want to place it about right there. Okay. And like I said, you probably cut this down over there. I'm just going to use my draft tools here and and add in a uh, add in a break. That way I can just get this to. Uh, fit on my page here 
but there's my there's my pattern there's my one to one pattern and I could simply go in there and print this out one to one cut it out and see how it landed on my pipe now this is only a two inch pipe that's why it's able to fit here on my B size paper but that's a quick way you know quick fast easy way of of doing this. If you saved this as a parasolid and brought it in a sheet metal environment, you would perform all the same steps I did. Only thing is you'd be able to save this as a DXF one to one. But with that, uh, thanks for watching this uh, quick little blog on how to get a quick, um, quick pattern for notching and coping your pipes using the frame design. Thanks a lot.